No way, you guys made it to day two. Talk about commitment. But can you make it through the 30 days? That's the real challenge. So I asked you guys questions in the previous video and you guys answered and I'm listening. One of the biggest requests was that you guys wanna do some more project oriented development rather than just going through concepts. And I guess that makes sense because going through you know, if statements and all this stuff, that's a really saturated market. Everyone's doing that. So I'm going to try and do that throughout this 30 days. Now, the easiest way to start this, we're still gonna go through some concept stuff, but I'm going to try to integrate that into a more project-based approach. So the easiest way to start doing this is to first get all of our code in a Git repository. Now, the reason you wanna do this is because at the end of the 30 days, you will want to have all your code that you've built and for one, it'll feel good because you'll be able to look at all that and also you'll be able to go back and reference that for future projects, which will be helpful. Also, if you're using GitHub, it can kind of give you some rep if you're looking for a job or whatever it might be. So we have our project here and I'll show you what I want to do. Uh, oh, uh, so if you open a browser and go to github.com forward slash Caleb Curry, <laughs> that's me you're gonna see my github repository and there's some stuff in here nothing too crazy but you can go to my repositories by clicking the repositories tab and you can go into one of these and see how everything is structured so this is a simple project that all of the files is in in the root directory of the repository so what i want to do with you guys is basically instead of having all of our files right here, when you first open it, I wanna have folders so it can say my awesome project, my, my web application, or whatever else we get into in this 30 days. I'm still trying to keep it open just for some excitement and I'm just kinda of learning as I go. So uh, I think that's the first natural step so then we can go through different projects and we don't have to try to force it all into one project. So what you're going to want to do to do something like this is search for Git, which is different than GitHub, uh, Git is source code management, and then we take that that uh, repository that we have locally, and we put that on GitHub for hosting, so it can be accessible everywhere. It doesn't have to be public; you can make it private if you want for free. So, what we're gonna do is you know download that and install it, and you should be good to go. Um, to check if you have it installed, what you can do is inside of a terminal, you can open it just by searching terminal. You can go in here and all you have to do is say git. Why is that not working? I don't know what missing xcron is. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is an issue with me updating my Mac, which I just did a couple of days ago. Uh, so that's what I'm assuming the issue is. So all we got to do is update Xcode, something like this, and paste that in here. Install. Maybe. Doesn't like that. <laughs> oh, it's frozen. Okay, um, not now. Okay, it's not gonna take that for an answer either. Technology, I swear, geez. Hmm, we're just gonna force quit that. And we'll try it again. So what I'll do is I'll just try it again, but this time I'm gonna select get X code. See if that does anything. And yeah, I'm gonna download this. And there's not enough disk space. Man, I'm just on a roll today. <laughs> This is uh, authentic development here, so I'm gonna try not to cut too much out of this out. I guess we'll just get rid of this junk. All right, let's try this again. <sighs> and while we wait for this, I guess we can just create a new GitHub page. So let's go over to GitHub and we're gonna sign in. And once you're in, all you gotta do is click this little plus, there's a little drop down, and say new repository and then give it a name. 30 days of Java. I'll make mine public so you guys can go look at it. And I'm gonna skip this step. Don't uh, don't click this initialize with a readme. So we're gonna create 
the project, the repository locally, and then we're going to basically push it up to this location. So we're importing an existing repository and it tells us to skip this step if that's what we're doing. So click create repository. And we're gonna follow this, these steps right here. So once we have our project ready and we want to put it online, we just have to execute these two lines of code and I'll explain those in just a little bit. So let's check if Xcode's done. Highly doubt it because, you know, life. Oh, wow, freaking eight gigabytes, bro. Oh. oh. I don't get paid by the hour. Why, why do I have to do this to use Git? Why? Why is Xcode so stupid? <laughs> this is very uh, informational. Why do we need Xcode for Git? Here's how to do it without Xcode, or at least a question. There's a binary installer that you can download. That seems to make more sense. All right, I'm gonna try one more option, which is to just download it using the downloader on the Git website, which should work, so guess we'll find out. So click here to download manually since it obviously doesn't want to. And there we go. Well, we're up to 38 minutes, uh, 54, two hours, great. Just opening when complete. Okay, so this video has taken a south turn because my internet has gone out. So I'm pretty much unable to do anything useful right now. So what we'll do is we will just take a little bit more uh, of a look at some of the Java fundamentals and hopefully we can pick up on this tomorrow uh, without having to worry about all this stuff. So I apologize if you've been following along, but I encourage you to get it all ready to go for tomorrow. All right, I am back. I took a break to meditate and cry for a little bit, and I think I figured out what I'm gonna do now. So the original plan I had for this video um, kind of flopped. So what I think is I'm going to take a moment just to answer some questions I've received on the very basics of Java. And what I'm thinking for the next couple videos is I'm gonna do this video on control flow statements. So we're talking about if statements, if else, else if, do, uh, whiles, for loops and all that stuff and talking about the differences um, and then in the next video talking about collections so arrays and queues and stacks and lists and all all of those things and then in the video after that doing object-oriented concepts so just to make sure we're all on the same page with with object-oriented programming so what do I have to talk about with control flow? So anytime someone uses the word control flow, what they mean is branching and looping. So branching means separate things can happen in your program based on the, what's happening. <laughs> and looping is doing something multiple times. So for example, we get an input and we can branch based on whatever the value given is. So right now we're getting some input and we're or we're, we're creating a scanner and we're storing an input in this string s. So what we can do is we can do if, let me get rid of all this junk right there. Okay, uh, yes, that's right. And then inside of the parentheses, we can put some expression which will evaluate to true or false. So we can say s dot equals and it's the third one on here and you want to make sure you use that and not two equal signs which you'll see sometimes so s equals and we'll just say caleb and if you've watched my java videos or pretty much any of my tutorials i have done very similar examples to this um, and i have some kind of oh s is not closed so what that means is uh, you open a scanner but you never actually sorry in is not closed. So we open the scanner and we need to say in.close when we're done. So that way, at any time we create a variable like that, it's using memory. And if we just leave it open, then it's wasting memory that could be used for something else. 
So if the string they enter is equal to this, we will just say, hey, Caleb. And then we'll also have an else if, and in this situation, we're gonna have a different name. So we'll just copy this here, paste that, and we'll also uh, do another name like that. And lastly, uh, I like to put those on the same line for Java. We'll, we'll say, hey, Sally. And then lastly, we'll have an else, and we'll just say, you're not welcome here. So make sure you got all that typed out. I typed out pretty quickly, but that's because I've done it like six trillion times. But I'm, I'm not that great of a typer, so maybe you guys got it done faster than me. So let's run this. And it's going to expect an input. It's not super clear, so what we might do is instead of saying hello world, we'll say enter your name. Now when we run it again, it's gonna say enter your name, and we could say Caleb, and it says hey Caleb. Try it again, we could say Sally, and it says hey Sally. Lastly, we can try another one, uh, John, and it says you're not welcome here. Now, the first question you might have is why, what's the point? Well, right now it seems really simple because our program is not complex at all, right? Like this isn't adding value to the world. But if you think about the potential of what this could be, we could be reading something from a configuration file and we can branch how the application acts or responds based on a particular value. And that's the value of branching. So if you just do an if by itself, so if you have it like, like this, well, then that can either happen or it cannot happen. When we add an else, did I just, okay, I was just making sure I could go back. <laughs> when we add an else in there, it's one or the other. One of them has to happen. Now, if we do it where we have an else if, only one of the three can happen. Either the if part, the else if, oh, sorry, the else if part, or the else part. The else is always optional and the else if is always optional as well. So you can get rid of the else here and it worked just fine. You can compile and you can run. And if you put something in that isn't Caleb or Sally, it's just going to ignore it. Like you never even typed anything in. So we could just say Sal and nothing happens, which is what we wanted. So the next thing is loops and this is pretty simple so the first one first one we're going to talk about is a while loop and before we start the while loop we'll just create a variable and by convention it's i so you say while i is equal to um, sorry while i is less than 10 what are we going to do we're just going to say um, I is plus I. And then at the end of the while loop, we'll say I plus plus. So there's the three steps of a loop. We have the initialization, initialization, the condition, which is right here, and then the update. So I always remember this, I see you. And um, yeah, what this is gonna do is it's gonna print out the value of i for each iteration of the loop. So let's get rid of the if statements. We don't need those anymore. We don't even need that scanner in, but we'll comment that out for later. So when we run this, it just says i is zero, i is one, all the way up to nine. So this is the syntax to get 10 iterations. And this is very useful if you need to do something numerous times. Now, a another type of loop is the for loop, and it's going to work the same way. It's just uh, set up a little differently. So in this situation, you put all of the three pieces of the loop inside of the parentheses. So you say int i is zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. And uh, we'll comment this out so we can keep it for a reference right now, but we need to comment it out so we can use this variable i down here. And you note, note that we declare the variable right here. We don't have to do it above it, so that's nice too. And you don't have to do the increment inside either. So all you have to do is say sys out, and you can do whatever you want in there. 
So when we run this bad boy, we get the same similar thing, zero through nine. And the last variation I wanted to talk about in this video was the do while loop, which is like a compulsive version of a while loop that's going to run at least once. So basically what we do is we put the a do part up here and that's where our code goes. So that's where we put the system out and then we have while some statement is true or while some condition is true. And we'll have the I++ in here. So the syntax isn't as clean, but I think that's going to work the same way. We get zero through nine, but if this is false, meaning it doesn't run at all, it's gonna go at least once. So the do while loop will always go at least once. And that's ideal if you wanna show a menu at least once or ask somebody something at least once, but you don't necessarily want to keep doing it a certain number of times. So those are the main control flow statements. So we got the if, else if and else, we got the while loop, the for loop, and the do while loop. Now again, all this stuff is covered inside of my Java series. So if you need to go through and watch each video on each one of those pieces, by all means go and do that. But even if you know this all, it's probably a good refresher and I think it'll get us ready to start the content in the next episode. Now, one thing I did want to mention that inside of this condition, we were doing something like this. This is a comparison and it's a type of operator. And we haven't really discussed operators, but we, we've been using them and we'll use a lot of them. So this is a comparison operator. It allows us to compare values. This is an assignment operator. It allows us to assign a value to a variable. There are logical operators, so and, as well as or, and there's, there's probably other ones too. There's arithmetic or arithmetic operators used for addition, subtraction, and multiplication. And those are all the details of a language you can learn when you want to master the language. Again, we're just trying to cover the basics and get everyone just kind of, what's the word? Just trying to warm up our programming chops. Yeah. So I think what we'll talk about soon is the different types of data structures that you can use in Java. We're just going to be talking about the key main ones, which are arrays as well as lists and, and so forth. So that's what we'll probably talk about next as well as trying to get our project up in GitHub. Um, but don't stop here. I encourage you to expand your skills today in some other way. If this was not enough for you, then go do a little bit of extra research on the control flow statements, or if you want to get into the data structures ahead of time, go do some research on that and learn about the different Java data structures. So that's your homework for today. And with that, farewell, peace out, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Also for day two, I apologize, this is a disaster. But it's a commitment to authenticity, so I have to post it. All right, peace out guys.